Deployment strategies are super important to know as a DevOps engineer to understand how to deploy your applications properly. And it is also something which is asked a lot in DevOps interviews. So make sure you know them. And this is why in this video, I will explain five most used deployment strategies along with examples and when to use them depending on your application. So make sure you watch this video till the end. Let's start. All right, so I'm here on my computer screen and I have this very good document that has information about all the different deployment strategies along with examples, when to use it and also how to use it. If you want me to share this document, do let me know in the comment section and I will share it to you. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudChamp, please subscribe to CloudChamp. We are very, very close to 100,000 subscribers. So please subscribe to CloudChamp. I post videos on cloud and DevOps. With that being said, now let's start with the video and understand different deployment strategies that you should know as a DevOps engineer. Let's start. As a DevOps engineer, we deploy our application using different methods or strategies to make sure that the application is deployed successfully with less or no downtime and no issues caused to the end user. So it is very important to understand which deployment strategy is best for your application. And in this video, we are going to be learning five important strategies to help you deploy your applications properly. But before we get started with learning different deployment strategies, it is very important for you to know what is a deployment. So a deployment is nothing but just releasing or upgrading a software so that people can use it. In simple words, deployment could be creating a new application and making it available to the end user, or it could also be upgrading an application from version one to version two. Deploying an application is a very critical process, so you need to be extra careful when doing it or else if there are any issues, it will cause many problems and you will not like it. This is why it is very important to create a plan on how you would deploy your application or create a deployment strategy. So what is a deployment strategy? A deployment strategy is a plan for how to release and update software carefully to avoid problems for users. And there are different deployment strategies. The most popular ones are recreate, rolling update, blue green deployment, canary deployment or AB testing. And in this video, we are going to learn all these important ones. There are many interviews where you are going to be asked questions on these different deployment strategies. So make sure you understand all of them. I do have examples and extra notes to help you understand all of them very properly. Now let's start with understanding what is recreate deployment. The first deployment strategy is the recreate deployment strategy, which is very simple and straightforward. Let's say you want to update your application using recreate. It will delete the previous version of your application, deploy the new version, and then start giving traffic to it. For example, if you look at this diagram, this is the version one of your application. Using recreate, it will delete the previous version, deploy the new version, and then start giving traffic to it. So this is version one. It has been deleted. Now there's new version and the traffic is routed here. If you look at the definition in recreate strategy, the existing instances of the applications are terminated all at once, and then the new instances are created with the updated configuration. So this is a recreate strategy where all the old stuff is thrown away and the new stuff is put in place. Now benefits of using this strategy is it is very simple and straightforward and it also ensures that all the instances or pods are going to be running the same version of your application, either version one or version two. There is not going to be an issue where some pods are showing version one and some pods are showing version two. The disadvantage of using this strategy is there is going to be downtime during transition so when you delete the version one and the time it takes to create new version, it, there is going to be downtime and the customers are going to face issues. So this is the disadvantage when using the create strategy. Now to help you understand this strategy more with an example, if you have version 1.2 of your application deployed, updating it to version 2.0 using recreate strategy would involve terminating all the instances running version 1.0 and then deploying the new version, which is 2.0. So this is how you can do it. And now you might be asking when to use recreate or other strategies. So you can use recreate strategy whenever you have an application that is okay with some downtime. So if your application is stateless and can afford to be temporarily available during updates, you can use the recreate strategy. And this is how you can use it. This is a Kubernetes deployment manifest. In this manifest, we have a strategy type of recreate and using this strategy, it will update the application from version one to version two. This is what recreate strategy is. Moving on, the second deployment strategy is the rolling update, which is the default strategy when deploying applications on Kubernetes. So how does this work? When using rolling update to deploy an application, it will create a new pod 
or a new instance of your next version before it deletes the previous one. To help you understand this more better, look at this diagram. We have version 1 of our application. We create a new pod of version 2 before we delete the version 1. If everything works fine, we have to delete the entire v1 and our application is now upgraded to version 2 using rolling update. So in rolling update, we first update our applications and then delete the previous one. So if you look at this definition, in rolling update, new instances are gradually created while old instances are gradually terminated, ensuring a smooth transition without any downtime. So benefits of using rolling update is there is not going to be any downtime. So zero downtime deployment because we are also creating before we delete the previous instance. Also, it is very easy to roll back in case there are any issues. So if the version two is not working properly, we can always go back and start using the version one. The problem with this deployment time is longer than recreate because here we are not deleting all the instances at once. We are first creating next version and then deleting the previous one. So obviously it will take time, but it will not have any downtime. So you will use this deployment strategy whenever you have applications that require zero downtime during deployment and can also handle multiple versions running simultaneously. So how can you use rolling update? Here is the Kubernetes manifest file that is using strategy of rolling update and also has max unavailable max search, which provides instructions on how many instances or reports should be available all the time. So this is rolling update strategy. If you have any issues or questions about any strategies, do let me know in the comment section and let's move to the next strategy, which is the blue green strategy. This blue green deployment is actually a very popular strategy that is also used when deploying applications from different environments like staging to development to production. Also something which is asked a lot in interviews. So make sure you understand properly what is a blue green deployment. So what actually is blue green deployment and how it works? In blue green deployment, you will have two identical environments having same version of your application. And if you want to upgrade your application from version one to version two, using blue green deployment, you will first update one of the environments. Let's say both of your environments have version one. You, you want to upgrade using blue green environment. You will first upgrade this to version two, perform all the checks, all the tests. And if everything works fine, then you redirect your traffic from version one to version two. Once you have one environment having version two and everything works fine, you will also do the same to the other environment to make sure you have two identical environments for the next update. So this is how blue green deployment works. If you look at this definition here, blue green deployment involves running two identical production environments, the blue one and the green one with only one active at a time. The inactive environment can be updated without affecting the users and then traffic is switched to the updated environment. So this is how blue green deployment works. Users switch from old version to new version without even noticing. The benefits of using blue green deployment is there is not going to be any downtime. So zero downtime deployment. And it is also easy to roll back by switching traffic back to the previous environment. So if you deploy an application using blue green deployment and there's any issue to the new version, you can always redirect your traffic back to the old version. This is one of the benefits of using blue green deployment. The problem with using blue green deployment is you will require double resources to maintain identical environments, which will cost you money. It will have to pay more cloud bills if you are using blue green deployment. And when can you use it? You can use blue green deployment when you need to ensure minimal downtime and easy rollback capabilities. So how can you implement this? Here is an example. You can see there's a manifest file having service deployment. There are two deployments. One is the blue deployment and the other one is the green deployment. So using this manifest file, you can have two identical environments and you can switch traffic between both of them or update the application. So you can see the green application has version 2.0, whereas the blue one has version 1.0. If everything works fine in the green one, you can do the same to your blue environment and you will have two identical environments for the next update as well. So this is blue green deployment. Now the next deployment strategy is canary deployment strategy, which was very confusing for me when I heard it for the first time, but it's actually very simple. So what is canary deployment? In canary deployment, you will have two environments of your application, one having the old version and second having the new version of your application that you want to make available to everyone. But before you make it available to everyone, you just want to test out with few users. And this is where you can use canary deployment. 
So in Canary deployment, you, you can test out your new version with some amount of your users. And then if everything works fine, you can make it available to everyone. So if you look at this example here, we have version one of our application. Deploying a new version using Canary would be giving some amount of users. If everything works fine, then give 100% of the user. And this is how Canary works. If you look at the definition, you will see Canary deployment involves rolling out updates to a small subset of users or servers before rolling it out to the, to the larger group, allowing for testing in real world scenario before full deployment. So using Canary deployment, you can test out your new version before you make it available to everyone. Now benefits of using Canary deployment includes risk mitigation by testing with a small subset of user. And you can also quickly detect issues before affecting all users. Disadvantage of using Canary deployment is Canary deployment requires careful monitoring and management of traffic routing. Luckily, Canary deployment is supported by Istio. And you can see here is the Istio manifest that is using Canary when we can define different weight or the percentage of how much traffic should be given to version 2 of your application and how much should be given to version 1 of your application. So when should you use it? You will be using Canary deployment when you want to test out new features or changes with small subset of users before rolling out to everyone. And deploying a Canary can be done by gradually routing a percentage of traffic to the new version. The next deployment strategy is A-B testing deployment in which you deploy different variations or versions of your application to decide which one is best for your users. In this deployment strategy, we have two different variations, the A variation and the B variation. And if 50% of traffic is coming on the A1, you get around 15% conversion. Whereas on the B, if 50% traffic is coming, you get around 35% conversion, which means B is better than A. So this is how you can decide which variation or which version of your application is going to be beneficial for you. So A-B testing involves deploying multiple versions of your application simultaneously and directing different users or requests to each version to compare performance or features. Benefits of using A-B testing is it allows for comparison of different versions in real world scenarios. It also enables data driven decision making based on user behavior. The only problem with A-B testing is there is going to be complexity in managing multiple versions of your application simultaneously. So when to use this is A-B testing is appropriate when you want to compare the performance or effectiveness of two different versions of your application. And how to use this? So you can use A-B testing deployment strategy in the code base rather than in the Kubernetes. And here is an example of Python code. If a particular feature is enabled, then use the new version or else use the old version. You would have to deploy both the versions of the code and control which version is executed based on the feature, flag or any other condition that you set. So these are all the different deployment strategies that I used in DevOps. I hope this video was informative. If you have any questions, any doubt, do let me know in the comment section. Please like this video, subscribe to CloudChamp. Thank you and have a good day.